We're here at the Malvern Hills Classic. Uh, pretty much it's a mountain bike festival. As you can see behind me, there's loads of trade stands. I'm gonna go and hunt out the tech. Come with me. Nothing special to reference here other than a paint job. Three guesses who's, who this belongs to. It's definitely inspired by uh, Blake Samson's love of weird, obscure camouflage. Okay, we're here with the uh, Unite Components checking out these super cool cranks. So, uh, what do we need to know about these bad boys? So yeah, they're machined in-house uh, in Mid Wales in Newtown. So every part on here is 7075 aluminium, including the axle, the the lock nut there, and uh, the kind of the caps here. So they're self-extracting, so you don't need any tools. We've got a 12 mil Allen key on the retaining nut, so you can't accidentally undo it. And that is also anti-clockwise. This is a prototype, but this side will also be self-extracting when it comes to production. Um, they come available in two axles, so that's a 29 or dub, and then also have a 30 mil axle in there as well. So you can, you can change from boost, super boost, keeps it nice and modular. Uh, what sort of price tag? So it's not confirmed yet, but they will be sub 200 pounds. Uh, Weight-wise, they're 570 grams for the assembly, uh, so it's, it's pretty competitive. And what sort of rider are you aiming at? Uh, aggressive rider, yeah. So it's um, it's for kind of heavy trail, downhill use. Uh, they look absolutely awesome, but there's also a super cool looking frame here. So uh, guessing it's obviously a prototype stage at the moment? Yes. Um, this will be a kind of fully billet CNC machine frame. So you can kind of see here where this has been printed, we've got the kind of the, the joins. So the head tube here will be machined at a billet. This section there, again, machined at a billet, that section and that section. We'll weld some tubes in between, and they'll all go back in the machine, and we'll 3D machine the whole thing to kind of give us this carbon look frame out of aluminium. Um, what's the score of the back end of the bike? So it's a Trunion linkage. Um, it's, uh, it's still in development, it's all fully designed. And uh, again, that'll be CNC machined on the back. You imagine you've got an arm coming out there, there, and then your rocker. You've got a, a brace in there, which is bolted in. So this will all be anodized as well, so it won't be painted. Have you, have you got any shots of the back end or anything we can see? Um, <laughs> you've got a render there of the, of the kind of full assembly. Oh, nice. So it's also got internal storage in, in the bottom there. And hopefully room for three bottle cages. You can, if you look to that one, you can kind of see it explains a bit, a bit better how we're going to make it. That's that's a really cool way to make a frame. Yeah, I mean, so we, we initially designed it like pole, kind of one solid billet. Yeah. Um, but with Corona and uh, Brexit, materials were so expensive, it's just not viable to make it anymore. Yeah. So we've redesigned it to this kind of more section frame to bring it, to make it cheaper ultimately. And, and where did you say you were uh, actually ma manufacturing these? It'll be made in-house in our factory in Mid Wales, which is in Newtown. Amazing. So uh, a, new, a new Welsh frame coming to the market soon. Uh, 2022? Yes, definitely. Well, awesome. Well, awesome. Uh, keep an eye out for those. I love this. Someone who's come prepared for a valve core to come out as well as a spare chain link. Something I love about events like the Mulvans is you get a whole bunch of smaller, cooler companies making really unique things. So for example, there's a lot of 3D printing going on. They're working in development with a bunch of other frame companies like Deviate, this is 76 projects by the way. Uh, they make loads of cool bits and pieces for your bike like enduro straps and things like that. But I've just spotted these, which actually I think could be a game changer. Take your regular valve stem. What do we know about these? They're high pressure, they're pressed up, and yep, they clog up sometimes, don't they? So we always tell you how you take them out and you unclog them. They've developed a high volume valve. Look at the difference in size. So this accepts a regular push-on style chuck from a track pump, uh, so it won't fit with normal pumps and stuff just yet. It's longer. Uh, this one is actually designed for road deep section rims at the moment, but there will be a mountain bike one coming. But the fact it's high volume, it's not gonna clog up. That is, that's genius. Look at the size difference compared to that one. And it's definitely a better way around than using a Schrader car valve style valve on a mountain bike rim because uh, let's face it, a Schrader valve is not the ideal choice on a mountain bike because of the fact the actual Schrader valve itself is quite, well, it's quite wide really, isn't it? So you think how small a rim design is. Uh, and I know people out there will still drill out their rims in order to run them, but this is potentially a much better option. I mean, look at the size of it. Also, it's friendly if you want to run inserts on there as well. Note it's got a little system at the bottom to allow the air to escape. It won't get clogged up at the bottom. So a really smart piece of engineering there from 76 projects. Um, 
I hope they look after that design because I'd imagine a lot of other people would want to make something similar because that is really, really cool. It's not often you actually see something I think will be a game-changing product. That is one, for sure. It wouldn't be Mulvins without a trip to visit my friend Jamie Lynn from Mountain Mania. The guy is a bit of a maniac when it comes to collecting retro bikes and I've just been past the stand, it's just behind me there. Look at this, this is a completely box fresh giant ATX1, probably dating back to 1998, I'd say. Six inch travel downhill bike, uh, developed in conjunction with Rob Warner, and I believe John Tomac, although Tomac actually raced an intense bad stop as a giant at the time, because I don't think he was completely happy with this. But this bike has never been ridden, it's box fresh from the 90s. Jamie managed to find this bike, I think it was in a bike shop in Greece, still in the original packaging, Everything is original except just for the handlebar grips. It's just mental. Boxer 151s on the front there, uh, Mavic SUPs, Magura Louise, brakes on there, the race face cranks, is it the AC chain guide on there, uh, grip shift ESP. That's like, I don't, don't even know what ESP used to stand for, but um, it's just, I, I can't believe it's brand new. Insane, isn't it? And this really is why I like being at things like the Malvern Hills Classic, because it's not like a bike race. This is a festival. You can race a bike if you want. In fact, it would make an ideal place to do your first bike race without the stress of going to an exclusive race and not getting on with it. You've got loads of other things to do. You've got an airbag in the background here. There's kids racing. You can knock yourself out on the slalom course. There's so much cool stuff. And as you've just seen, the pits are just loaded with the latest bikes and tech for everyone to check out. I love it. I'm having such a cool time here. At events like this, you're gonna see old bikes, you're gonna see new bikes, and you're gonna see some kind of quite important bikes. So this is the white PRST-1. It's quite an old bike now. Uh, it was given the name after Preston, that robotic dog, I think from Wallace and Gromit, I'm gonna say. And the cool thing about this is it's a linkage configuration on the front end. And they're trying to get around the effects of brake dive, uh, basically the way your body weight transfers and compresses the front end on the bike. By having a linkage like that, it doesn't do it. So your geometry doesn't change under braking, doesn't change when you're going off steps and things like that. So actually by all accounts, it was a really good handling bike and it did work really well. It just wasn't, I guess, terribly well received. But something, something else cool about white is they use this sort of technology to develop a newer and more modern bikes. And also, white bikes bears the name of John White, who is our Formula One design engineer. Pretty cool brand, I think. Okay, we've seen it before, but we cannot deny that this is one of the coolest downhill bikes ever made. Of course, it's one of Pete's Santa Cruz V10s uh, from his last year of uh, professional elite level downhill racing. Uh, this one bearing the last orders, the sort of the Spitfire image on there. It's got his World Cup wins, it's got his World Champs, victory on there, Canberra, Australia, 2009. It's just absolutely loaded. Wherever you look, there's loads more details. Last orders down there. Uh, pretty cool tag for his last ever sort of downhill bike race there. It's just amazing, the level, even the coil spring on here is sprayed up. It's just, I swear this thing looks better now than it did at the time. I must have overlooked it. Uh, just astonishing. Loving the color of those Chris King hubs on there as well. A headset, just just look at the thing. It's just amazing. It's not new tech, but it's just cool. You know what these are? They're JMC's bikes, they are. Mm. <laughs> How good is that? I know that every time I see a cool bike, I say it's my favorite, but this really is my favorite. So Mint Source is a character uh, it's a cartoon sheep, essentially, and he's been in Mountain Biking UK magazine for decades. Now, Mint Source has got a bit of a cult following, I think it's fair to say, in mountain biking. And this bike has been sprayed up by Fat Creations, it belongs to Bex from Fat Creations. Clearly a Mint Source fan, and just the artwork on this is just mind-blowing. And the attention to detail, the quotes and stuff that are on here, uh, let alone the fact it's a great bike to start with. So, uh, starting down the chainstay, the Mint Force, because it's a GT Force. Pretty cool, straight out. On the handlebars, you've got Envy Bars. <laughs> Sorry, terrible, but so good. And there's just amazing quotes everywhere. And there's even a Mint Source Fan Club badge on the bottom bracket shelf. So anyone old school will probably remember the Mint Source Fan Club. You can actually join that through the magazine. And there's even uh, the South Downs and Gnarly with a Grim Reaper on there. Uh, there's the Love and Reality Squadron planes. It's just got all of the details from Joe Burt's amazing creation there. And even on the fender itself, I think Joe Burt did some of the spraying on here. 
and there's a quote on there as well. It's just mind blowing. Uh, apparently Bex isn't too good with her suspension settings. There's a little comical mint down there with a little hmm thought bubble on there. And it's thought some, somewhere in the region of uh, up to about 200 hours worth of work on this. Um, kind of hard to tell because it's been done over uh, obviously a lot of time and different parts of the process. But you're probably talking about two grand or something just for the cost of doing that because this really is artwork. Really is something special. I've got to say that is the coolest bike I've seen. Uh, the Mulvins, I just think it's absolutely beautiful. It's a work of art. I love seeing a new bike in the flesh, uh, especially when details are scarce. So Pyga are actually going to be Euro bikes. You're going to be able to see a lot more detail on this when we have it. But for now, this is the new Mobu from Pyga Bikes, made from carbon fiber in the same factory that actually assembled the Aerial Atom, uh, which explains why the finish on that carbon is just astonishing. You really need to look it up close to appreciate how nice that is. Uh, so it's designed around 29 inch wheels. It's a super lightweight bike, suitable for trail, for marathon, for cross country. They do 118 mil travel platform and also 135 mil platform. Something very cool about it is the headstock style system at the front there, so you can change the reach of the bike there. Uh, four bar style back end on there. I mean, just look at it. It just looks fast, doesn't it? What an awesome looking bike. And just another completely random thing to add. I'd never even considered asking where the name Piger comes from, but uh, turns out, the guy that makes his bikes is Patrick Morwood. Uh, you might know him from Morwood Bikes previously. Um, Piger is Pat in Chinese, apparently. Gotta love a retro mod. Old retro bike there, the modern version of that. Uh, another Piger bike looking super cool. But I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about why this is actually quite a cool bike. So this one is badged up as an iron horse, but it's actually a Sintesi Velici frame. Now, essentially, it's a factory that made Marzocchi suspension forks and shocks. Now, rumor has it they only ever made these frames so they could test their own shocks and forks back in the day. And Dave Cullinan, who used to ride for Iron Horse, tried one of their frames out in a car park at a bike race and actually said, you know, this thing's pretty amazing. He rang up Iron Horse and said, get me one of those frames, put your stickers on it, and I'll win world champs. And that's exactly what he did in 1992 world champs at Bromont in Canada on one of those frames. Off the back of that, because of the fact there wasn't technically any other mass-produced downhill frames, everyone was buying these frames and putting their own stickers on them. So you saw them as Saracen, you saw them as Rudy Project, you saw them as Iron Horse, a whole number of different brand brands ran them. So that technically is the first mass-produced downhill bike you could get. Pretty cool, I think. I don't know about you, but the paintwork on that GT has got to be the coolest thing I've seen. But there was a number of cool things in this video. Let us know in the comments underneath what you loved. See you in the next one. Ta-ra.